Okay, welcome back, good afternoon. Today we're going to complete the activity we initiated last Thursday when most of the people here looked at documents that I posted inside the page about the format and the methodology of the final project to get on the same page and see how we would rate those documents in terms of their relevance for potential inclusion in the final project to train you in the first step of the final project, which is to find documents that are strong, that are interesting, that are exciting for your cataloging. And if you have something strong in front of you, then the process itself becomes much easier. And the final result, including the presentation, is bound to receive a strong grade. After we're done with that, we're going to watch a few scenes of the first auto from 1927, the last of the silent movies we're going to watch on the topic of the automobile. It's not exactly purely a silent movie because 1927 was the period of the transition from silent movies to movies with sound, but most of the theaters outside places such as New York or Chicago, or Los Angeles, were not equipped with sound. So in this case, the film traveled with discs and on those discs, they put the soundtrack, they put a few words from the actors and also some noises of the cars. I will introduce the film and then we're going to watch three segments from it. I also created a special separate page for the film as I've done with other films with a synopsis, pictures, frames from the movie and quotes. So here we are. If you were not in class last week, you can still participate. You can click on the examples, you can look at them. And I believe for sure we talked about number two. I don't remember if we talked about number one. From this list, we're going to go through the list and our rating was quite simple, from one to five, where one is irrelevant to be excluded, two is marginal, three is good, four is very good, and five is something that is exceptionally interesting and we don't expect to find any ones or twos in an A-level project. We will find some three and fours and if you're lucky enough, you can find one or two documents that are exceptionally relevant and interesting. But between three and four, that's the expectation for the five, six documents in the final project. So, last time we had two students assigned to each document. So this would be number one. So I'm sure Alexa, you were number one. And well, I don't know if you were sitting there. Devin or? Yes. Devin. So, did we discuss this last time already? Regardless, I'm oh, sorry. We stopped at three, included? I don't know if we did. Let's go through this briefly, just in case. What did you think? How did you rate this document? What number did you give it? Right, so. The 
Yeah. And how they in mind that you may opt to have a unifying topic for your project but that topic can be loosely defined as well because depending on how you define your topic you might have a hard time finding enough documents for the project so the first parameter is relevancy that point of view this is definitely relevant it's the report it's the account of a trip made by two women in France going from driving from Paris to Boulogne what makes it relevant though is not the content right the content has to do with the automobile because it is an automobile drive the question that I can use to evaluate this document for inclusion is do I find in here almost exclusively the facts of the chronicle of this trip or I have something that can be considered opinion can be considered in this case the emotional reactions the feelings associated with the trip the answer is resoundingly yes it's not just the fact is also how they felt about the automobile it's about the feeling associated with the whole experience and therefore yes this something like this would be definitely on the list for inclusion unless you uh, you're looking for documents on a separate topic what do you think Devin what number did you give it um, I also give it like a or yeah. Kind of and, and again, it's, um, it's not like yeah. this is exact science, right? Yeah, so I, I'm there too. A three and a four, that's where it is. And I did kind of find it interesting that it almost reads like a modern travel guide mm -hmm. in a way where they talk about. Yeah, in some ways, yes, of course. Like they see, but they talk about it in a very human context, and they also talk about what they met there. It's sort of interesting to think about the. Well, I guess, what. How the existence of the automobile sort of affects how we view where we travel, how we travel. Definitely, details were included, and that was the expectation from the readers because travel writing was a popular genre and it was supposed to include specific enough information mm -hmm. for anyone who wanted to follow the example of, of these women tra female travelers and and therefore uh, that that's what what you will find in most instances for similar articles on top of that however because there are so many articles and there is one down the list where the details of the places that were visited or the landscape that was seen during the trip are predominant. In this case, there are enough references to how it felt to be driving and about the automobile itself and the speed and the air uh, and, and the smoothness of the ride, etc. that you would be able, for the purpose of cataloging this after you've uh, um, included the title, the author, to have enough significant passages to include in the section with quotes and enough things to say for the analysis and everything else is easy enough, for example, to indicate the subtopics uh, for, for this. Okay, so we did number two and, and for number two we said it looks like the focus is strongly on the automobile and it is however when i ask myself the question that i posed before is this a document where facts are 
almost exclusively at the attention of the reader? Or are there enough opinions, evaluations about the experience of the car? This is mostly primarily about facts, even though the facts concern regulations, it's still mostly a factual account of the evolution of regulations and policies applied to the automobile. So I would rate this a two. It is not irrelevant, clearly, but not strong enough for inclusion, or it might be included as the only marginal example in a document with good, very good, and exceptional examples, right? But I, I would see most people moving on. Okay, so I've included several illustrations. There was a strong interest for this kind of category in the past. Even here for illustration, illustrations, you have to perform a preliminary review and ask yourself, are the details telling a story? Are the details documenting a situation or a theme? The interaction, for example, in this case, people we meet are people that drivers meet during an automobile ride, and therefore the theme of this is reactions to the automobile. So do I have enough that I can explain, describe, and then analyze or unpack? because a lot of illustrations have a punch, right? They may have a line or the punch may be embedded in the illustration itself, but not enough meat, not enough content for you to write your entry in a catalog. This is accompanied by a caption that explains who the various people are, but it's clear enough you have People work in the field showing, at least some of them, some curiosity. You have people who gather around uh, the automobile itself when the automobile has stopped or when the driver is cranking the automobile. So this is distant curiosity. This is close curiosity or direct curiosity. You have people trying to stop or slow down the car and this is clearly a parody of the interaction, the difficult interaction between the automobile and horses at a time when horses were frequently found on the road. So why is it a parody? Because of course, at this point, not only do I have to stop for a horse, but according to the vignette, I may have to stop even for a toy horse, right? Mocking the sensitivity of horses. Horses were famously sensitive, are uh, sensitive animals, they're sensitive to noises, they're sensitive to experiences they're not familiar with. So even animals such as dogs and horses had to learn how to live with cars, but this, even a toy horse, is reason enough to stop. Another anecdotal encounter that you find often. Uh, for example, you find a couple of references to this even in a motor car divorce where Louis Closer Hill talks about Peggy. Peggy is, is the protagonist and her voice is telling the story and Peggy is telling the reader how at least a couple of times they encountered in Italy carts on the roads and the drivers were asleep. This is not fantasy. Uh, if uh, the horse is traveling on a route that is uh, traveled many times, frequently, regularly, then the horse doesn't need directions. The horse uh, is intelligent enough, like a dog would be able to find uh, their way home. Even a horse will drive uh, to the, their destination and therefore, uh, the, the cart driver would uh, be able to fall asleep. Here you have another obstacle on the road. You have a herd of cows and, and you have the, 
driver dressed in the uniform. This long overcoat was typical of automobile drivers at a time when most cars were open cockpit and therefore even driving only 30 miles per hour, you, you have a lot of air coming your way together with dust, uh, pebbles, small pebbles, uh, and, and therefore you're protected from the air and you're protected from the dirt and possibly also shielded from uh, the small detritus that can come uh, your way. And notice the eagerness of the automobilist who wants to continue and the impassibility, the indifference of the shepherd, of the peasant there, dressed, of course, like a member of a lower class. So something like this has enough that can be described, explained, analyzed. Besides this, as I try to do, it might be possible to connect an illustration to a passage from a reading that you have done or from other documents and texts from the period and therefore this within the category of illustrations which is possible you don't have to build your project just on illustrations your project can com be comprising a, a mix of different media but within the category of illustration, this would also be a three or a four. Who was working on this and, and your opinion? Yes. What did you think? Oh, wait, uh, never mind. I was working on this. I was working on people we meet. Oh, yeah. This is people we meet. Oh, so is? Yes, it is. This is just the, the, the bottom of it. Oh, the bottom. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, did you have a rating from yeah. the notes? I gave it a two because... It, it does relate to car-related stereotypes, but I said that it relates to them in a, in a limited manner. It's a bit generic. Yeah, and it's comedic, and I do believe that comedic pieces could be useful for a project like this, but in this case, um, it's just not, it's just not sufficient. And it's, like, like the comedy like isn't really smart enough to use I can see your reasoning, absolutely. However, I would push it farther than a two because of the effort made by the illustrator to document a range of reactions from mild curiosity to a more intense curiosity to hostility inside number three to indifference for number four and five. So. And, and of course, it's your decision. And uh, the problem is with usually including something that is not strong, not excluding it, because you will find something else for sure to be, to be included. So no problems there. And I can follow your reasoning in finding this a bit generic, a bit flat. And, but if anything, uh, you might say it's borderline between a two and a three, okay? By the way, is another account of traveling, touring with a car in England. And this would be the opposite of the piece we saw before from Paris to Boulogne, because in here, there are fewer references to the car, and most of the content is focusing on the places that were visited, the monuments that were found, etc. Who worked on this? What rating did you give it? Um, yes. I gave it to um, just because it, it gives information on like a culture standpoint, but not so much on like the. Not enough that you need to explain, right? Mostly are the facts of this trip and the details of these ruins. Taylor? Um, I did the same thing. I gave it a two because it's mostly about the monument and there's nothing really about the yeah. car. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. So, 
be careful, try to select things that are really strong. Costumes and chatter is a rubric and sometimes these magazines have rubrics on specific topic that you can follow once you've identified something that is promising, then within the same volume, you may be able to find 10, 15 instances, iterations of this rubric. And once you think you have something, then you can compare different texts and decide which one would be the strongest. For this particular rubric that uh, I've, I've read, um, in, in several issues. A lot of, the rubric is about fashion for automobile drivers and passengers. So how women driving or riding on an automobile should be dressed, sometimes references to men as well. A lot of the time, even though the general topic is completely relevant, right? Fashion for the automobile. A lot of the time when you submit this uh, document to the initial test I suggested before, mostly facts or enough opinions, you find that mostly the rubric, this, this column, uh, uh, is about the details, about the material specific details of the fashion. How an overcoat is done, about the fabric, about the cut, the design, of this overcoat, or it could be a veil, because uh, a female driving, uh, women driving an automobile or riding an automobile uh, often had a veil, and there is a reference to it even in the lightning uh, conductor, or goggles, or uh, gloves, etc. It seems relevant because it is about the automobile, but you cannot conduct any kind of meaningful cultural analysis. What's there to explain? It's a description of fashion. So unless this includes comments on the significance of women participating in the operation of the automobile, driving or riding on the automobile, or what it means to be seen in the automobile and therefore how the fashion together with the object itself, the automobile, modifies the public persona gives a certain kind of impression when they see you go by on an automobile with a certain article, unless you find enough of that, then it should be discarded. Who worked on this? Yes, Justine? Yes, yeah, so, yeah, I pretty much thought the same thing. Um, especially when you get to like the first half of it, you're like, it's like a letter written to her friend. Yes. So yes. you're like, where does the car even come in? And then it's not until you like get to literally like just one little column. It talks about... Like, yes, the, 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 the whole first column is... Yeah, is it's literally just like a, like a letter to her to friend. Yeah. yeah, so... And then it just really gets into just like, like oh, like if you go to this place, you'll find a, a really cool jacket. Mm -hmm. Like... I hope you like and the price if they're talking about a sale yeah, they're like, oh, and again they're, they're describing the, the sleeves like, right uh, all these details yeah and there are a few comments yeah though, it's like oh this is there. good for the chauffeur it talks a little bit about like women and like things like that but other than that like they're really like there's no there's nothing to it like you so couldn't explain what you couldn't score did you give anything. it honestly i thought it was like a one or a two like it really no not a not a one it's a two, could be with a stretch, a low three, right? Yeah. So you could stretch it uh, if you're able to really uh, overanalyze small references, but no more than borderline between a two and a, and a three, not very strong. Anyone else worked on this? Keegan, what do yeah. you think? Um, when I was reading it, I was just like, I was like, I had almost the exact, like, Thoughts. I was like, wait, this is about cars. <laughs> but then, like, I but then I read that it was like what people in within cars like usually wore when they were like mm -hmm. driving out. And I was like, okay, this makes a little bit more sense, but like, still not enough to where it's like a not not a strong idea. example. No. Exactly. Thank you.
in here we have a story Now, stories about the automobile, and again, this is a recurring column called the Chronicles of the Carburetor Club, where the spelling for carburetor is the, the British spelling from the period. Um, and, and usually there are stories about the automobile. If the automobile is found within a story, not as a marginal secondary accessory or a casual reference to the fact that at some point two characters use a car to move from point A to point B, but that is not, the fact that they use the car for that transfer is not significant for the plot. Uh, if the car is strongly represented in the story, then you have something good. Now, of course, there are better stories and stories that are not as convincing, but usually within a story like this, which goes on for a couple of pages, two and a half maybe, you should be able to find enough significant quotes to include in your quote section. And of course, the summary would be the summary of the story itself with particular attention devoted to the passages where the car is strongly represented and the analysis, well, uh, the analysis should focus on how the story is, in, is, is, how the automobile is incorporated in the story, how the automobile and the theme of the automobile brings the story forward. Who worked on this? Johnny, what did you yeah, think? Um, so I was between two and three. I think it's pretty good because there are some certain themes that it explores. And for example, it's an odd story, it's an right? Odd, yeah, it's it's a bit odd. odd. It, it's not very good literature, yeah. right? It's, but, it's not. Yeah, what I found interesting, like, just from the first so sentence, enjoyable, but yeah, just from the first sentence, um, we have a person who declares that he's conquered the world with this invisible. Mm -hmm. Yes, the car as a monster yes. is a trope. In the literature of the period, the definition so of the car is a monster. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is a common theme, like the car is seen as something supernatural or mystical. There's another quote when a person believed that his mortar was a medium used to translate spiritualistic messages from the taps he heard in the machinery. And keep in mind that the way this feature is built is that there is a frame, mm -hmm. a frame story, and the frame story is that there is a circle called the Carburetor Club, where people gather and exchange ideas about the car, and then once in a while, one of them tells the other a story. So the first paragraph is the frame introducing the story. So this is what people do at the club, if this were an actual club, and then a member of the club named Rawlinson tells a story, and every time there is someone else telling a different story. Okay, so... All together, this could not be less than a three. Yeah, like you can call it a three or a four, depending on how well you're able to analyze the story. As I suggested before, the story is not really well car. crafted. Yeah, it's also the car, but sometimes plays not a central role, especially on the other page. Mm -hmm. And there are some elements of the supernatural, yeah. so this is interesting. Also, Anna Sofia, what did you think? Um, at first, I gave it a two. <laughs> but then That's fine. Huh? <laughs> as, as I said, it's not as, as long as you don't give a four to a story that is a two. But if you give a two to a story that is a three, that's not a problem in the end. You'll move on and find something else. So don't worry about it yeah, and, and keep good. your. Uh, opinion, that's fine. It kind of focused more on uh, Vivian Newberry, mm -hmm. and it focused on the car, but then I realized um, the strangeness or the peculiarity of uh, Newberry wouldn't be there if it wasn't for the car or the mystical. So the car itself becomes part of yeah. the magic nature the of, the, of the story. So it's clear that the car is considered something exotic and therefore aligned with a story on the supernatural. There's, there's a 
there's one quote there where the driver is charged with latent electricity. So <laughs> it shows how the car is affecting the character of the yeah. person. Yeah. No, no, I, shy, and and this calls for references to other documents that we found, Vern, for example, and others as well. Absolutely. Okay, let's see if we can do at least another one before the film. Yeah, we can complete the, the first series of example. And this would be another story from the same feature, the Chronicles of the Carburetor Club. And again, you have a paragraph with the frame story and you have the story itself beginning at the second part. As I said before, if you identify a regular feature, the same way that we did about custom and charter, it would be cost costumes and charter. It would be possible for you, once you've seen that this is somewhat interesting, to follow various, uh, the feature through various issues, and then to decide which one in this series is the strongest or the two strongest stories, although one might build the entire project on a series of stories such as this, because you would have a homogeneous material where you could follow patterns, right? And from one document to the other, include references to each other. So who worked on this second story, which is about love? Yes. Um, and your name again? Christian. Christian, thank you. Um, I gave it a three. I thought it was pretty good. It's like a romance story about this <laughs> guy trying to get the girl from his cousin. Yes. Um, and like the thing that I and the cousin is rich. The cousin has an automobile. So it seems like a better uh, choice, right, yeah, from a social point of view. They're like kind of like the same person in like a lot of ways, but he has this like fancy car and he doesn't. Mm -hmm. um, so I would talk about that. It talks a little about how like the car itself actually does drive and like, how it handles like narrow roadways and stuff like that. So I thought that was good detail. Yeah. Um, so I thought it was pretty good. Yeah, a three or a four. Again, it's not a good a good story from the narrative point of view, and and it concludes very quickly and in the most mechanical way, right? What happens at the end? Do you remember? He, how is it that? The protagonist who's in love with this woman, Beatrice, mm -hmm. manages to get married, to in get engaged yeah. and start a relationship. How does he change his condition? Doesn't he get like a Mercedes and he dresses up and then he just like takes her like... Right. The, uh... But then what happens when they're on the road? Um... They have a puncture. And when he goes and check the tire, he finds out that the tire is full of rubies. And so he becomes a rich man. Uh, the cousin disappears because the cousin had some dirty business yeah, yeah. that he was running away from. And he becomes rich because the car itself allowed him to find love and wealth mm -hmm. at the same time in the most, in, in the easiest but somewhat idiotic way, right? It goes to check the, the puncture and finds these gems. But so a three or a four, depending on how much you like it or how easy you find it to work with it, but certainly something that could be included. If you don't like it and you exclude it again, that's not a problem at all. So I'll stop here. Uh, we have a few more examples of illustrations and ads, but I can continue next Thursday to add to this. Now, I want to introduce the film. And then, as I said, if we have enough time, I want to introduce three sections, three segments of this uh, film. So the story in, in the, the script in just a few words is the following, the story of a father and a son plus a woman who will get engaged to the son at the end of the film. The father is obsessed with horses. The son is not interested in the father's passion and business. And this creates a, a rift between the two of them that uh, 
gets worse through the story. By the end of the story, the father is broke and alone because he has become obsolete. Because when he was younger, horses were important in society and that justified his commitment to this passion, to the sports and the business. By the end of the movie, 1905, nobody wants to buy horses from him. He is going bankrupt. He has to sell his horses. And because of his rigid attachment to the culture of a past society, he has uh, become distant from his son. Of course, at the end of the film, after a little bit of drama, the son and the father get reunited with the help of the woman because in strongly moralistic films, films from this period, although these are pre-code, uh, code films are films where around 1933 or 34, Hollywood enacted a series of criteria uh, to enforce the good representation of positive values and uh, stayed away for anything that was risque or socially objectionable. That's why in postcode uh, Hollywood movies, for example, you will often see husband and wife sleeping in separate beds. And you always see them dressed, fully dressed, even when they're in bed. That's because of the code. This is pre-code, but still there is a strong moral element and it's, it can be found in other movies. Even some of the movies we'll see uh, later on in the semester, uh, whereby the woman has not only to represent the romantic element in the film, but has to represent the values of family. And those are testified through the positive role of mediation that the fiancé has managing to reunite the father and the son, even though the father has behaved rather badly, but, but you never criticize fathers in these films. So by the end of the film, they're reunited uh, and, and they're both rich because they um, create a factory. At the end of the movie, you will see that the stables of Hank Armstrong burn uh, to the ground, but there a factory is built and it's a father and son operation where they both uh, work on producing successful automobiles. So they're both rich, they're both fulfilled and satisfied. The only thing is that at the end of the film, you will not see what you might have found in other films from the period, including one of those we'll see, a, a scene where father and son are happy together because the actor playing the part of the son died in an automobile accident before the end of the movie and so they couldn't shoot uh, such a scene if they had one in the script, we don't know about it, but if they had one in mind, which is quite possible, they had to go another way because the main actor uh, was missing from the stage. So this is Hank Armstrong, the father, uh, a jockey himself, winning races with his uh, favorite horse, uh, Slow Eyes, in this uh, place in Michigan called uh, Maple City. And after uh, the race shown at the beginning of the film, we will not see that part. Uh, the loser is called like that in the cards, uh, is very dejected and sad, and he has a conversation with Hank, and he says, why don't you sell me your horse? You've won with it already, so would be my turn. And Hank says, I'd rather cut my arm uh, rather than separate, get separated from this horse. However, uh, what's significant in the initial, in the setup of the story is that the, son, uh, the, the people from the town are celebrating the victory. They're celebrating at the racetrack and then in a pub but the sun is not there. The sun is not at the race. The sun is not at the first celebration where the mayor, even the mayor congratulates uh, Mr. Armstrong, but the sun is not there. We meet the sun in scene three, 
He's at the drugstore. Drugstore is at the period uh, of the period where places where you could go and have ice cream, right? Or uh, a, a drink, etc. And he's there with Rose, his girlfriend. And he tells Rose, close your eyes. I have a surprise for you. When she opens her eyes, he has built this uh, car out of cookies. Somebody did a wonderful job with props, building this entirely with cookies. And he shows his intention of building a car. He calls it a horseless carriage, where in 1895, it's a novelty, he's not inventing the car. The title is completely misleading. First auto doesn't mean that the protagonist is the creator of the first auto. There is no first auto in here. Well, there is, uh, the, there is the inventor, but it, it, it's not the, the core of the film, but he wants to go into this kind of business. However, his father comes by and he says, I didn't see you at the race. And he's not very happy. And someone else comes by, he's a suitor, another suitor who's pursuing Rose and is clearly richer. He has a car later on. But of course, by the end of the movie, she will go with, she will choose Bob, Bob Armstrong over him. Now, for the following year, Hank Armstrong and Slow Eyes keep on winning every single race at the racetrack. However, after a year, the horse dies, giving birth to uh, another mare, uh, which is Bright Eyes. And the father is called to the stable and he says, where is my son? And again, the son is not there. The son is sleeping. And the vet who was called comes in late because he's driving a buggy. So buggies are uh, slow and, and it's a stormy night. The roads are muddy. So the vet cannot do anything to save slow eyes. The father, after the, the horse has died, goes to his son's bedroom, Bob, and to tell him the, the, the horse died. And the son is asleep. He wakes up, he yawns, and he says, oh, gee, father, that, that's pretty bad. But clearly the reaction is uh, mild, and he goes to, back to sleep. The father goes into another room, takes a portrait of the horse, and is there with, with crying eyes, with tears in his eyes, uh, rem reminiscing about the, uh, about the horse. There is a change in the air because the death of this famous horse which had made the town famous is not uh, felt there isn't any strong reaction by maple city people because around the same time the inventor of the first automobile comes to town so this explains the title even though it's it's a marginal episode and uh, the mayor, who used to celebrate the victories of the horse called Slow Eyes and his jockey, Hank, the mayor this time organizes an event, a party for the inventor, where the inventor is greeted by the people and also shows slides with a projector, slides uh, documenting his uh, automobile. So clearly Bob is interested. Bob helps the inventor. After this, uh, this is where we, we see the first segment. So I'll stop and show you the first segment, actually. And notice how the idea that speed is the principal quality of the new world. Here we see one of the inventions, the steam carriage by the French engineer Cugnot that we also looked at. And by the last part of the movie, we have Rose, who has just been the target, made the target of the advances of the other suitor. And we have Hank, impoverished, resentful with automobiles. The automobiles are everywhere even though in this case, the automobile is being drawn by horse, but they're winning nonetheless. 
So Hank will decide to sabotage a race in town so that a car participating in the race will explode and only at the end he will realize, he will learn that his son is the driver of that car and that car will have an accident and he will believe that he has killed his own son. Now we're at the end of the movie. We're again at the racetrack in Maple City, but this time there are no horses racing. There are these two powerful automobiles. This is supposed to be a reproduction of the famous Ford 999, a vehicle used by Henry Ford to set the land record in 1902. And Rose goes to visit Hank to tell him that Bob is there and Bob would like to meet him. That's when Hank realizes that he has endangered the life of his own son by adding sulfur to a car that will be driven by Bob during the race. Remember how the vet, the vet couldn't go fast enough on his buggy to save the horse? Even in this case, Rose and Hank has to take a buggy with the horse to go and save Bob, and they are late. Bob comes out, but he's hurt, and he falls to the ground looks bad. At this point, Hank is convinced that Bob has been killed by him, by his own father. They take him to the hospital by car, but he's non-responsive. So the horse that Hank loved so much, Bright Eyes, has failed. And here you have his change, of course, is almost to the point of beating the, the horse. And we'll do that. wanders through the city and then decides to burn his own stable. Which clearly marks the end of the older technology of the horse. There he is with a lantern. Now he sees this table as something that belongs to a world with no future. probably put together two pieces of film, one with the fire, one with the actor. Notice they show you Hank Armstrong livery, or stable, and because that later that will be replaced by the factory. The past is burning.
but then Rose will come to tell him that Bob is recovering, has asked for him. Everything is forgiven, because fathers have to be forgiven. doesn't want to go on an automobile and then finally as a sign of full technological conversion agrees to this automobile ride and now the stable is replaced by the factory but we don't see Bob from this point on, we don't see Bob, as I said, the actor died before the end of the production. These are the cars they're producing. And of course, this is a Rolls Royce. You can even recognize the logo. And here you see the father happy and rich going to see an automobile race years later and there is a celebration also of the technology of the plane where at the end it's just the last minute minute and a half And the final frame is for the horse, but the horse has become a useless thing, so it's just in a pasture with this tree representing lack of vitality, right? The tree is pretty much dead. Okay, thank you.